I'd like to tell everybody a little bit of a story. You see, back in, I think, elementary school, I came down with the flu. I was having a generally unhappy time, and I spent my days sitting on the couch in the living room, wrapped in a blanket, playing my Game Boy. And I didn't have a lot of games, maybe the original Mario Land or so, and my dad, who played games even before I did, wanted to give me something that meant something to him. So on the NES, he played a lot of the original Metroid. Metroid 2 had recently come out for the Game Boy, and one day, much to my delight, he came home and gave me a present. And I spent the rest of my sick days engrossing myself in this crazy world, running around shooting missiles at Metroids and looking at these little flying things, and generally getting lost and having no idea where I was. I'm sure by this point everybody on the channel knows my love for Super Metroid, but what you may not know is that Metroid 2 holds a very close place to my heart. And given that the original NES Metroid was all Metroid 2 had to work off of, Metroid 2 did so much to change the formula. There were no real bosses in Metroid 2, just the increasingly powerful Metroids throughout the game, throughout the world. This constant counter ticking away, telling you everything that you've got left to do. A much larger, more detailed sprite so you could see what your power suit really looked like. This is, I think, one of the first times we really saw that power suit. Look at the box art of this game, for Pete's sake. You were given much wider, broader areas to explore, no longer strictly the vertical and horizontal columns and rows that made up the NES Metroid, le giving, lending itself to much more interesting, mechanically interesting environments, more memorable environments. And of course, Metroid 2 introduced a number of power-ups that have since become iconic of the Metroid franchise. It brought us the Spring Ball, the Space Jump, the Spacer, the Plasma Beam, and probably most unique, the Spider Ball. Now, of course, the sad thing is, by today's standards, Metroid 2 is almost unplayable. I've gone back and watched videos and tried to play through the game myself, and it's not a pleasant experience. Your sprite is so big and so detailed, but it takes up so much of the screen that you can hardly see the environment around you. So you're very frequently making blind jumps, hitting things that were just a few blocks off the top of the screen. And of course, a camera zoomed in that far means for as little of the environment around you as you can see, it's hard to imprint a memory of where you are. Not to mention the color palette of the game and the blocky nature of the graphics really just made everything look the same. It's so easy to get lost and so hard to figure out where you are, and you're hitting your head on everything as you turn around. For as much love as I have for this game, if any game in the Metroid franchise needed a remake, it was this one.
Welcome to Let's Play AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake. AM2R was the pet project of one Milton Dr. M64 Guasti, whose name I'm sure I mispronounced, and has been in development for onwards to 10 years now. And not long ago, on Metroid's 30th anniversary, it was officially released. AM2R is a complete remake of the original Metroid 2, updated a little bit for the times, but the vast majority of it was left as loyal to the original as possible. This is not only one of the best remakes I've ever played, but honestly, this is one of my favorite Metroid games now. Sadly, the downloads for AM2R have since been taken down due to DMCA claims, but I would like to request the chat do not discuss the takedown, as even Dr. M64 himself has said, instead of replying with hate, go get the original Metroid 2 from the eShop. Show them that 2D adventure platformers are still a thing people want. And to be honest, this game was available for quite some time. I'm sure if you poke around enough, you'll find it somewhere. Without further ado, Let's take a dive in. I've of course already beaten the game. We're going to be starting on normal. The first time I played this game, I played with on the keyboard. So let's try this with an actual controller as is recommended. Metroid 2, as many will recall, takes place very soon after the original Metroid. where in the original Metroid you attacked Mother Brain's base on planet Zebus, destroying all the Metroids present. And in Metroid 2 now, we're going to SR388, the planet, the home planet of the Metroids to wipe them out for good. Welcome to SR388. The controls of this game, and in fact many of the graphics, were taken directly from Metroid Zero Mission, which admittedly was one of the better um, 2D handheld games. We start with very little in the way of power-ups. We do have the Morph Ball. As far as controls go, I can, I do feel like I can criticize the controls a little bit, but I can't really criticize the remakes fault for that as the controls were modeled after Zero Mission, any fault that I find with the controls directly are more a fault of Zero Mission. Personally, I don't have a big... I don't have any big complaints, but I do feel like everything is too snappy. Like, you jump very quickly to reach your peak, and then you fall very quickly to go back down. It reminds me of one of those old, like... Kung Fu Ninja movies where everybody's just like pow 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 whatcha um, Kind of the opposite to this would be something like say Super Metroid which Is almost no snap. It's entirely fluid motion And I don't especially have anything against the snap, but I do feel like maybe it could have been loosened up a little So if we go to the right, as we did in Metroid 2, we find not only the save room, but lava. 
And guys, they take a lot of shots. But we will quickly find that we're simply unable to progress. So we're going to have to come back this way later. So this was the pet project of Dr. M64, but he did not solely make it. Um, an, an amount of the graphics were pulled from other Metroid games, predominantly Zero Mission and maybe Fusion. But predominantly those, a lot of custom graphics and even custom artwork was made for the game as well. Um, I imagine a lot of the enemies had to be custom made as many of the enemies in Metroid 2 are enemies that have not been in a Metroid game before or since. Hey, water! And it's actually, obviously, water in this game. Man, that's great. Ugh, guy. You only take, like, two shots, but you're still... Big and ugly. Missile doors only take one missile to open up. You get a, uh, instead of just standing on it and pressing start to save, you actually get kind of a proper save. But it's still the pedestal. Maybe not quite the same pedestal, but it's still nice. Gotta be super careful here. Um, you also start with the power grip, which was introduced in Zero Mission. I think it was a I think it was a power up you could get in Fusion, and then in Oh dear. So um. I guess we're just gonna have to do this the hard way. Scanning bioform. Press that to open the logbook. Alpha Metroid! The Alpha Metroid has gained immunity to cold temperatures. The loss of several nuclei within its green membrane has left it vulnerable to concussive weaponry. A plated exoskeleton partially covers it. This organism, emer organism emerges from the molting of its larval form. Though aggressive, it is relatively weak at this stage, and its new appendages have yet to grow to their full length and strength. Now, if we... This game introduced the Metroid life cycle, the Metroid species and the life cycle. And despite that we have an alpha Metroid breathing down our throats, I feel like this is important to mention. I see, Metroid species, the dominant species of SR388, Metroids hunt for any form of energy found in natural or synthetic organisms, leaving behind deceased husks after feeding. They are highly resistant to conventional weapons and possess great adaptability to in foreign environments. Estimates suggest a small number of Metroids set loose on a populated planet would lead to the extinction of any present life forms. As such, they've drawn much attention from space pirates who have repeatedly tried to use them as biological weapons. And then, the big reveal, scans on the native Metroids reveal their most common form in prior incidents is merely the species' larval stage. While there are records of extreme mutations triggered by space pirates using abnormal stimuli, the Metroid homeworld of SR388 is seemingly the only environment where the species can transform naturally. So Metroid 2 introduced the Metroid's natural life cycle changing from its larval form and growing to something new. Hence what we have in front of us, the Alpha Metroid. You can shoot them directly from the side, but you have to hit them. There we go. You can't hit them directly from the side, but you have to make sure to hit their lower half. Otherwise, you're mostly going to be shooting up and trying to hit them from the underneath. Ooh, rumbling. Now, one thing this game added that actually helped a great deal to fleshing out the world and what's going on with it 
are these log entries? Some of it is just kind of explaining, some of it is just really neat flavor text, and some of it is explaining the world and how the world works to you. It's effectively the game's method of tutorial, if not just flavor text. So, we had an earthquake. The massive cave system is located between two tectonic plates, largely flooded by an extremely dense and caustic substance similar to magma, though not. The recent earthquake has altered the cave layout, and the hazardous substance has drained to lower levels. The cause of the earthquake is unknown. Initial orbital scan of SR-388 detected no instability within this region. So what that means is the lava that we saw before will have drained, as we can see here, letting us move on past the barrier that we were at before. So with that, we're going to want to make our way back. Oh my goodness, this game is so much easier to control with both a controller and just easier to control in general than the Metroid 2 on the Game Boy. Oh, speaking of the snappy nature of the game, this I suppose is one of them. Just when you're down here and you jump up. Like, you're here, and if you try to jump off the top of the screen, the camera goes, holy crap, we gotta get up here. Whereas, um, Super Metroid did something similar, but it did a much slower pan up to get to where you are instead of being quite so snappy. Really, the snappiness doesn't, um, it is personal preference that I think I would prefer things smoothed out a little bit, and even the controls and physics smoothed out a little bit. But it is a very minimal complaint over the course of this game. Um, I've mentioned already, I absolutely love this game and what it's done, and that it's let me go back and re-experience my childhood how I remember experiencing it. So until next time, everyone, when we delve deeper into SR388, and try to wipe this planet clean of the Metroid race.